And we're back uh, with conversations. So diving into our first major conversation right here on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Our guest is already uh, poised to do justice to this topic. Well, 19 northern governors and traditional rulers in the region uh, that's northern part of Nigeria have called for the amendment of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to give legal backing uh, to the concept of state policing. Now, this, they said, uh, is the only way to tackle the myriad of security challenges facing the region and the country at large, according to them. And they're saying among these are banditry, insurgency, uh, kidnapping, and other forms of uh, criminalities. Uh, this recommendation was contained in a communique issued at the end of the meeting of the Northern Governors Forum uh, and Northern Traditional Rulers Council held in Abuja, according to reports that we have. Uh, the outcome of the meeting was released on Tuesday, and it was the first time the Northern Governors sitting together with traditional leaders in the region made a strong case for the need to allow states to establish police forces. Now, glad to say joining us to discuss this all important issue is uh, um, a legal practitioner with the Bass for International Law, uh, Chief Fessis Uh Good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Kofi. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, uh, we, I mean, we, we're glad to have you, not just because you're a lawyer uh, and you're really very well um, poised to do subject uh, justice to this subject, but also because um, you come from the northern part of the country, albeit the Middle Belt. Um, are you surprised by this call by the 19 governors of the north, we can call them the kings of the north, and the traditional rulers of that part of the country saying, enough is enough, we want state policing now? No, Kofi, I'm not surprised at all. I, I, I would say that it's coming a little too late because this is something that ought to have been done for a long time. And I, I think the governor of the state is going to put his arms for communities against um, these invasions, these bandits that are attacking communities all over the place and killing people with what to abandon. Uh, the call for state police has been there for quite some time. And, and I think that the problems that are discussed this country, it do not have been a call for state police alone, but a call to decentralize a power from the center to the state. You know, in so many areas that also uh, are, are still confirmed in such manner that states are just used to nothing but uh, their salary paying uh, entities and what have you. I would say that the call is proper, it's in order. I'm not surprised it's something that we inevitably uh, come to be. Come to because we cannot expect these uh, people to be helpless and wait for the Nigeria police that is bogged down with incompetence and uh, uh, inertia to come in to stop these uh, attacks and what have you. The communities they also have a right to protect themselves, without police or no police. So even though we are questioning the Rationale for the Zambrangov to provide them arms and saying it is a criminal or it is against the laws. I don't think you understand what it means for self defense, somebody whose life, whose life is at stake. You know, the, the right to protect themselves and the exercise in several ways, and that means bringing in arms to several which is also from the uh, weapon. And they came. But with those reports that nobody knows how they ought to the community test. They are going to have the same problem like the United States that are now uh, running over themselves on how to uh, have a gun control. Everybody only has arms. So the proper thing is to bring it to the law and allow states to have their own police forces regulated by certain conditions and um, and and uh, in a manner that to be civil, in a manner that to be uh, with very much uh, in, in tune with the laws of the land. I think it's a very good call and something that should be uh, looked at very seriously. Okay. All right. Uh, um, uh, we, we recall that uh, a certain governor or government, state government, bent to Zamfara State, had uh, said they are going to. Uh, you know, I told residents to buy guns and defend themselves, you know, in Zamfara State. And they said that the, the government later came out to clarify that they meant they were going to do it within the ambits of the law. And even if they had to do the purchasing of the guns and weapons for 
uh, their, their citizens and residents in Zamfara State. Also before that, Governor Aminu Bello Masari of Katsina State had also told his citizens to arm themselves against uh, uh, invaders and against those who are uh, bandits or terrorists or those who are threatening their security. And before that, in about two years ago, uh, the governor of Benue State, uh, Samuel Otom, had uh, also asked his citizens to carry up weapons, to take up weapons and defend themselves. Um, what is going on in the northern part of the country? You know, let's just look at that in the context, this in the context of that, that situation. And is this the solution in the context of what is going on in the northern part of the country? We've been privy to the BBC documentary on bandits of the north, the Daily Trust uh, re reporting documentary on banditry in northern Nigeria to give a bit of a, an expose as to what's happening. But uh, I'm sure you'll agree that it's not the same in the Middle Belt or even in all parts of the north, northeast, northwest, and north central, you know, different situations and scenarios. But can you just take us through what you think is the problem and whether this whole issue of taking up arms to defend yourselves and state policing can address these issues, these problems? Well, it is rather awkward that uh, a modern government will tell the political parties and themselves. Uh, in a modern world, the uh, need has the out of uh, political power and military power and uh, uh, protection of citizens. The respect of citizens is one of the primary uh, requirements for the existence of citizens. When that fails and is not protected, they are saying still the can also be seen that it's so primary when government states is that is there arms and fight for themselves. That is the responsibility of the state. And I think in the Kakoku Tony of course in that direction, and the federal government also have taken very decisive measures to ensure that, 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 that the citizens are protected wherever they are. But you 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 find yourself confounded as a governor for instance if you wake up in the morning and see people who said they, they had dead people killed legal invaded and people who have and Rape is going on from bandits who come from God knows where. And you are totally helpless because you cannot, as a single individual, go into the villages or into the forest to fight them. And you find that the security architecture of the country is totally also helpless or maybe emasculated or weakened by whatever it is that is weakening them and making them not to be very responsive for that guy to the lives and property of Nigerians, or which they have physical responsibility. So it's a very rather terrible situation going on in the north. Those of us down the south here are very lucky that we wake up in the morning and they're supposed to be heading towards the invasions of communities all over the place. And that has been uh, on the basis of the explanation given by the president that these people came from Libya. And I would not want to say that in Nigeria to the plight of the Nigerian people to ensure that these people are really being or stopped in whatever manner is possible because that's their first constitutional responsibility. Every day we hear that they have killed that person to such a number of uh, Boko Haram and bandits and all that. But in the practical sense, we don't see anything on ground. And these people appear to be gathering more strength and from strength to strength every day. The situation in the North is really dire, I must tell you, Kofi. And then uh, it behooves on the authorities as possible to take a very good uh, course towards ensuring that uh, uh, that situation is abated. But uh, there isn't much coming from that direction. So it's not out of the place for the governors and the traditional rulers to meet and, and demand that state police be allowed to function. They can do it in, uh, contemporaneously with the federal police in whichever manner, subject to certain regulations and conditions. Uh, you know, over their conduct and their uh, modus operandi. But it is also important to point out that it's not just the issue of the police alone. We must define certain aspects of it uh, in terms of the structure, in terms of uh, the central uh, uh, allocation of power between the states, the, the, uh, the federal government, the company, not just be there uh, to receive uh, allocations at the end of the of defense staff. So, uh, the uh, 
competence or areas, and the federal government has everything. They, they make the whole of that stop talk that talks about the knowledge. Makes it a laughable. So there they must be a, a, a go at the stop story and not just the establishment of state police. Uh, the, the sense of the gate of the military has to be redefined in such a manner that every Nigerian will have access to their protection and security in terms of um, uh, internal interaction and uh, external aggression. All this is not coming to play. But like I said earlier, you see, the situation in the North is very dire. Uh, uh, the, the Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Rabo, had um, responded to Governor Beto Melo Matawale's government's call uh, for residents and citizens of Zamfara State to arm themselves, um, saying that the security agencies, including the military, were there on ground and uh, capable of defending the people. Now, uh, some you know experts have said you know time and time again the Nigeria's security structure is capable of dealing with the current threat threats being faced by the country. Um, shouldn't we be looking at that and looking at why they are not doing their job, the job that they have done successfully in other parts of the world, including Liberia and Sierra Leone? We normally would say, shouldn't we be looking at the the issues, the core issues behind? what's going on, why a certain Kaduna state will be overrun in, in a way by, uh, uh, by bandits where they can go pick people up and be, uh, hold them captive for 186 days without any hope of uh, government rescuing these captives where they can you know, snatch people at will on the popular Abuja Kaduna highway in a state that has military establishments and institutions of repute. Um, should we not be looking at the, the, the core issues, the root causes, of why we are where we are. But uh, the officials have given the answer, and this, uh, there's an indication that uh, they're more to meet, they are more than the eye than what they are seeing typically. Um, I would not have trapped the situation where we, we go into self help, we try to defend ourselves when we have a box on the ground, or we have this very large amount of money that's allocated to security of VA to in almost the entire national budget. We have a military software, a military system that's properly modern and on ground and has all the arsenal where we go to the terrorists or the uh, insurgent or whatever name you give it. Uh, it's government of the day, uh, its responsibility, its responsibility to protection. You know, uh, what, how did these people get into this country? Because from my own analysis, uh, from what Mr. President said, these people are foreigners, they come from another country, and if you look at them, they physically, they are not even Nigerian. A couple of them are met at Abu Garu, they are arrested. Uh, we, are, we are speaking mostly French language. And you see, the people just penetrated our hinterland that came destroying our communities and things, and government appears helpless. That was how this thing gradually started from Mogadishu in Mosquemaria, until it became a soil state when the security architecture almost collapsed. And that's the gradual uh, direction this thing is taking towards the sensible of destruction and helpless. I will say that uh, the government has not been very uh, thorough or very uh, exactly that it's uh, drive to ensure they have to provide the, the people. Mm -hmm. It has been half hearted measures here and there. For instance, I, I, I can tell you that when uh, the headsmen entered the, the, the um, mm -hmm. forest, they could see, if I'm not mistaken, um, the, the, the forest reserve. And the, the governor, Akere Dolu, raised up arms and was shouting to say all manner of things. It's very good in defense of the of the of the of the two that they have. They say they have their right to freedom of movement. Freedom of movement uh, uh, can, you know, that right allows me to move in the deepest forest, carry dangerous arms all over the place. And there are several instances where these things have not been uh, clearly shown that the government has uh, a good sense of responsibility and uh, is uh, very much uh, committed to ensuring that Nigerians are safe.
in Bedouin State, for instance, where killing to go on for a long time, in plastic state, killing is a lot of destruction to go on before the, the military men uh, come to show their heads. I want to say, we and we don't care that they are affected for safety. So it, it appears that the government is not properly situated, as it says, to go after the bandits uh, as well, for, very, for their own self service inside. Do not know, but I think there's more to it than this to your very eyes. All right. Uh, President Buhari, sometime this year, had an opportunity to sit down, you know, with, uh, for an interview, and uh, this issue was brought up, and he simply uh, said it wasn't an option in the search for remedies uh, for the country's current security situation. This is centralizing of a policing system in the country or creation of state police like it's normally called. President said it was not an option, it was a no option. Um, so is, is, are these calls not um, a waste of time, seeing the president has already he said, no, this cannot happen? It is not clear that the president to take it like that and start the time from peace. Let us be tired of it. If there's any requirement, to um, allow the, the police uh, system to operate in the state, or uh, maybe what we call police, uh, state police. It's not the decision of the president whether he likes it or not. Uh, we, we know to a large extent that we have a very compliant national assembly that almost uh, pandering to the interests of the president, you know, no matter how bad it is or good it is. Uh, the, 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 the presidency cannot decide in a, a, a total fear that no. It should not be allowed. The you know, National Assembly gives approval for the state police and they, they, they pass a bill and they bring it before him and reject it or reject it, refuses to or declines to put it into the law. It goes back to the National Assembly. If both houses will meet, think that just an override in this case. That's how the democracy works. That's how the system works. So it's not that the presidency will say absolutely, it's not like he said he talked about his structure in that he didn't understand what the structure is all about. For people that have been saying it was, it was all about the same thing, you know, uh, banding, the structuring, and the uh, very, very uh, simple solution to, to the problems of the country. Now he said, no, I don't want for the president to decide. It is for the people to decide. Sovereignty resides in the people. It's only a symbol of that sovereignty. And a part of that, he has subject to whatever he does is subject to whatever the National Assembly tells him or gives him or recommends for him. So I think it's very, very clear that there must be a very objective stance to some of these very core issues, vital issues of national interest that must be taken from the perspective of wisdom of the democratic system, understanding also that we have a constitutional system that operates in the manner that makes it very, um, should, should Supreme and over, over time overrides and over and uh, overrules any other contradiction of the state of the state. So if the national assembly is very much interested in something, it can pass it as a bill. If the president does not like it, he can he can decline to accept it as, as law. It goes back to the national assembly and it they get they get it passed and it becomes law. But I think it is very, very important. And also if you are looking at it from the other side, you're also saying that there's a possibility of having these states to the state police commission and leaving them again. It's one of those desperate things of those who may use it as a symbol of uh, the data against their perceived enemies. That is what that's one of the fears, and that's what happened with the nature of this system authority to this system. In the first form, the fear political started to use such fact their enemies. We put in the right people in the political affairs, people who are out to add value to the democratic process. We put in this kind of thing happening here and there. In, 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 like, in, I think what is happening in Hebrew State, how did the other outfit uh, that was the top is uh, trying to use to fight off people who are off. Yeah. yeah, talking about Ebu Beago. Of course, uh, Otom, who uh, called on the citizens to bear arms, has since re created his own uh, uh, internal security vigilante group of sorts of neighborhood watch. Uh, you know what has happened in River State in the past, so the, uh, the government tried to set up a neighborhood watch. <laughs> um, maybe yeah. we're inching closely, closely 
uh, ever so closer towards the, that inevitable point of having a state police. And uh, like you said, Fester Zoguche, chief, uh, that power resides in the people. And you said even if the president says no, um, ultimately you're saying it's the people who will decide. Thank you very much for your time, Chief Fester Zoguche, a legal practitioner, uh, joining us uh, all the way from the oil city of Port Hackett River State, Nigeria. We appreciate your time. Thank you very much, Kofi. Thanks for inviting me. Appreciate Good it. All right, Nigeria's federal government has recovered 2.6 trillion naira in all revenues from all companies in the country. What's up with this uh, and what does this portend for the Nigerian economy? We'll talk about this with Professor Ken Ife, an economic consultant, when we return from this break. Please stay with us.